<coughs> UNB talks of their plans to conserve half of the woodlot area. However, the only part of the woodlot area that will go untouched are patches of wetland areas. We suspect only because UNB cannot develop these lands anyway due to environmental legislation. If UNB was sincere about conservation of a major portion of the woodlot, they would preserve a large block free of any development. We are dealing with wetlands here, and anybody with any sense knows that preservation cannot be achieved by isolating little bits of wetland surrounded by roads and parking lots. And it gets worse than this. UNB has been systematically killing off the beavers in this area a fact confirmed by the New Brunswick Department of Natural Resources. Why would one eliminate beavers when they create and maintain healthy wetlands? No university, let alone one with beavers on their emblem, can justify the needless killing of indigenous animals when modern, low-cost methods of managing their impacts are well documented. And is UNB going to continue to kill new beavers that will migrate into the UNB woodlot each year to fill the, vo to fill the void? To top it off on the nature score sheet, the road construction has caused significant mud contamination of the viable fish habitat of Corbett Brook that runs through the UNB woodlot. You can see that the contamination must be at least 10 to 20 times the legal limit for suspended solids in fish habitat. This is very serious and the Canadian Department of Fisheries and Oceans and the New Brunswick Department of the Environment have now launched an investigation. The people responsible for this should be charged. You can see the chocolate brown contamination on YouTube. Just go there to the website and search for UNB Woodlot. We keep being told that this road is necessary for traffic to the planned south side rink, but we already have a major highway with an exit leading right to this rink. Why then would you need a second road running parallel and right beside this one unless you already have secret plans for what this road really is for? Our suspicions were confirmed when road construction workers told us that this road is already slated for commercial and retail development. Do the large residential communities of Forest Hill and Kimball Drive realize what effect this thoroughfare road will have on them? This will effectively funnel heavy traffic to and from this new development into their neighborhoods. And what about the plans to relocate the Albert Street Middle School onto Kimball Drive? Parents must speak up about this obvious safety issue. UMB will tell you that the matter of the road is out of their hands because the city of Fredericton now owns the 30 meter wide corridor that the road is being built on. Actually, according to the land grant of 1800 by King George III, it is illegal for UNB to sell any part of the land. This grant assigns forever the woodlot to UNB with the clear instruction that this land remains under the ownership and trust of UNB forever. One last fact about the road. Dr. John McLaughlin claimed to know nothing of the plans for a four-lane thoroughfare through the UNB woodlot. At the Earth, although at the Earth Day rally in the woodlot on April 22, 2007, over 120 concerned citizens in attendance heard the president respond to questions about the four-lane road. He said, quote, I haven't heard about a multi-lane development, unquote. When I spoke with him after the rally, he stated that it was the first time he was made aware of plans for a four-lane road. Knowing now that this road was agreed upon by UNB and the City of Fredericton back in 2005, I find his statements difficult to believe. I will just read you the quotes from the two main documents. The development agreement signed August 22, 2005 between UNB and the City of Fredericton on page 2, section 1C, quote, the developer acknowledges that the entire length of Knowledge Park Drive from Regent Street to Allison Boulevard shall be improved to a four-lane service cross-section as development proceeds adjacent to the roadway in accordance with future development agreements negotiated between the parties, unquote. And then, in 2007, February 13th, the EIA registration document submitted by Jake Whit Whitsford um, quoted, a three-lane cross-section would be sufficient to handle the demand over the next six years. However, eventually four lanes will be required. The three-lane cross-section can be designed to accommodate a fourth lane when required. However, 
it may be appropriate to construct the fourth lane during initial construction. A minimum 35 meter right of way should be acquired." Unquote. And just to give you an idea of the size of this road, it takes up over 60,000 square meters throughout the UNB Woodlot. So as you can see, Phase 1 of the UNB Woodlot shows no sign of the promises that UNB states on its own website. In a nutshell, here is the situation we're faced with. Insufficient consultation, no EIA for Home Depot, no plan for the woodlot, the killing of beavers, and no leadership. But since UNB has just started developing the woodlot, there is a window of opportunity for citizens to speak up and change the course of a development going wrong. Let's encourage UNB to start including its faculties, alumni, and the general public in the planning of this woodlot. As it, as it has stated many times since 2005, UNB claims it does not have a plan. So why build this road when there is no plan? UNB was the first public university in North America. King George III granted the Woodlot back in 1800 for this public institution to manage forever and never sell off these lands. However, UNB has not been acting much like a public institution over the last several years. For example, on the UNB website, the UNB Board of Governors have not posted their policies, their agenda, or the minutes to its meetings since 2004. It's funny, when you use a Wayback Machine, that is internetarchive.org, to see the past UNB websites, it says the following for the past three years, quote, this site is under construction, please visit again soon, unquote. We have to put pressure on UNB and let it know that the UNB administration is not an insider's club. 70% of UNB's funding comes from the public and our government. Through withholding donations, the public can exercise its influence over UNB. UNB can decide if it wants to risk losing donations due to mismanagement of its woodlot development. Go to smartgrowthunb.ca and sign the petition. You also have the option to pledge a donation to UNB if it follows its own stated guidelines for the development of the UNB woodlot. The beaver meter on the website, as well as the huge signs on Regent Street and Smythe Street, will track the total pledges as they come in. Spread the word. They'll tell people about this video on YouTube. Just search for UNB woodlot. Together we can make a difference. Okay. Is that okay?